All right, here we go. Welcome back to the rotary table series. I've gotten a lot of questions about how to position the parts on the table, and that's what I'm going to cover today. This is probably one of the easiest type of uh, alignment procedures that you're going to do, and it is as easy as making yourself one of these. It's a high speed steel. This is ground to 60 degrees, like my center drill that I put in there. Now, if you have an 82 or a 110 or whatever center drills you're using where you're at, Make sure your angle fits your, your cone or your, uh, your feature. Simply put this in your collet, bring it down into the part, apply a little bit of pressure, clamp it down. Now you're good. The one thing you're not good on is the rotation. You still have to figure out how to align this to the machine. Aligning the axis and true to the machine can be a real pain in the neck. I want to show you a couple of things that I've done uh, or a couple of accessories for my rotary table that I would recommend that you make, get, buy, acquire, borrow, whatever. This is definitely one of them. Okay, get yourself a center that you can put. <laughs> get yourself a quiet compressor. Watch this. This is a high speed steel 60 degree pointer. And it's got that uh, cool tool stuff on the back just because it's a brooch also. I try to utilize my material as best I can. So get one of these, something you can put in your collet. I would not suggest lining up from a drill chuck. If there's any run out in the drill chuck, it's going to translate to the location that you think you have on your part, and you're going to find out real quick that uh, you've got a problem somewhere. So get one of these, make one of these, piece of cake. Turntable. Turntables are different than mill tables. Get yourself a set of Get yourself a set of nuts so that you can hold your work down on your turntable. These are just standard. These are 3816, 17.4 T-nuts. I actually made these. If you're going to make them, make them in a bar. It's a lot easier. And then chop, 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 chop. There you go. You may also wish to make some of these. Some T-nuts that have a variety of size threaded holes in them because not all parts and all clamps are going to accept large screws. This is a taper plug that I use for the center of my rotary table. This drops down into the taper, and this allows me to indicate the very dead center or put a pin in here if I want to use that pin as a pivot point or a location point for a fixture. Okay, That's one of the reasons it's got that quarter inch reamed hole in it. It works extremely well. Sits down in the taper, turns a hole into a positive. Really good thing to have. Mr. Wiggler, you are going to need an edge finder. No doubt about it. No brainer, right? What kind of machinist doesn't have an edge finder? Indicator, Indicall. Get yourself one of these. These guys are amazing. You are going to enjoy it. Adjustable parallels. If you don't know they exist, now you do. These are parallels that simply walk back and forth. Got little screws in the side. You can lock them down at a specific height. If you're cutting a channel in a part too, these are handy for cutting a channel in a part. Stick this down on the channel and you squeeze them. And then you measure across here and you know what size the channel is. They come in really handy. And I'm going to show you in a second what I did to my turntable and why I would recommend that you have a set of these in your arsenal. Okay, let's relocate over to the turntable. Take a look. All right, once everything is zeroed out, once your dials are zero, your indicators are zero, I mean your, your rotational indicators, not your dial indicators, but once your dials are all zeroed out and you establish an axial concentricity between your part and the machine, well, the radial, cons the radial uh, alignment is going to be your next obstacle. So what I did is I mount a rail to my turntable and that is set true to the world. Just lock it down and uh, away you go. Now the Adjustable parallels that I just showed you come in very handy for this. And as soon as I mount this to a tripod, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to switch over to GoPro so there may be a little color difference in the film. Stick around. Okay, now that you have a pointer mounted in your collet and your turntable is aligned with your spindle, this is the easy way around. You are allowed to have a center or you have an existing hole. 
Bring your pointer down into your part. Snug it. Now this is the time where you would have to indicate the part, but guess what? You can't indicate the part because the spindle's got something in it. So this rotation here has always been a pain in the neck. If you clamp it down and guess when you indicate it after the fact, there's no guarantee that your alignment marks on your table are going to be true to where you want to start. So what you need to do is check the gap on the side here. I hope you can see that. Figure out which one of those little adjustable parallels that you want to use and go get it. Stick that adjustable parallel right in there. Make sure that the pressure is between the part and the rail. Don't get down here because you might influence it the wrong way. Now as you expand this parallel, watch the part. Boom. You are true to the world. You are now true to the table. You are now true to the axis of the machine. Life is good. This is when you put your clamps on and have at it. That is technique number one. Like I said before about the plug, plug goes down in here. And I usually put a subplate on here, so if this is hanging out a little bit tall, you're going to say, uh, okay, what's up? So if you have a subplate on your turntable, which is a really good idea if you're going to mill perimeters, don't mill into the surface of your turntable. Put something on here, put a piece of aluminum on here, put a piece of masonite or plastic on there because that also seems to be very rigid and very powerful to uh, avoid distortion under the clamping pressure. There's the second way that you can locate a piece. Pin in the part. Done. Okay, as last we spoke, I was griping about the fact that my rotary table was 12 degrees out of line. And guess what? It's not 12 degrees out of line anymore. And here's the fix. This little guy right here. I made a little outrigger for my original indicator. Picked up on the existing base hole and made a bracket. You know, I was going to make a straight bracket and wing it, but hell, I had a rotary table set up, so I actually made one that fit the contour of the base. And it worked out quite well. So there you go. We are no longer going to have to complain about non-vertical slots. And I did indicate the base square to the table prior to doing that. So any fixtures I make in the future will be pretty easy to line up. Alright, based on the feedback that I got, I'm going to put, oh, I say a dozen or so of these on my website. If you're interested in purchasing one, go over to the website store, take a look. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, it'd probably be a whole lot easier than making it yourself. But not nearly as much fun, because if I was you, I would make one, because that's uh, you have the machines and you have the passion, so why not? But it'll be on the website store if you want to take a look. Now, in regards to actually making a part on this rotary table here, I'm going to take a step inside the office, go on the computer for one second, and I'm going to put three options up. And uh, based on feedback I get from you guys, I'll let you pick which one I'm going to show you how to do. I have a pretty good idea which one you'll pick. Let's take a look. Okay, choice number one is a straight spoke item. And now we may have a six spoke versus an eight spoke, but it really doesn't matter. It's the fact that it has a straight earthquake going on here. There you go. It has a straight spoke geometry, which is a little different than a flared spoke geometry. So if you're looking to make something uh, like you would find to elevate a Bridgeport table, something with a crown nut that has little tapered teeth, I know there's at least one of you guys out there has got that problem, that would be the next option. So this one is option number one, straight spoke option number one. This is option number two. This is the flared spoke. Each one of these flares is pointing directly at the center axis of this part. And let me peel back here for a second. It's hard to do this. This is not on a tripod, so there you go. Looks like kind of a grapefruit slice, doesn't it? Anyway, each one of these webs is pointing directly at the center line of the part, the center axis of this wheel. And this will be option number two. I'm going to call this a flared spoke. Let's take a look at number three. Okay, this is number three. This is a slinger style. Each one of these little cutouts is a radial in geometry, and this is very much like what you would find inside of a water pump or a blower motor of some sort. Of course, these would be a little bit taller to grab the air. 
This will be option number three. If you want to see this done on a rotary table, purely manual on a rotary table in a fairly short amount of time. And that means not two days. <laughs> uh, put down number three in the comments below. All right, guys, those are your choices. By all means, let me know whether or not you want to see any of those. Oh, there you go. That's my little dog. Okay, that's all I got for you. Take a guess. Let me know. Thanks. There's a little bonus footage of the light that I just rigged up. This is a rectangular slot in here, and this is one of the table stops. Why not use the existing hardware, right? Goes up and bends into a 90. Got a one inch piece of plastic in there, clip desk light, 100 watt LED. Well, it's not 100 watt, it puts out 100 watts of illumination, it's probably like a 13 watt. But lighting up these shots is always a pain in the neck, so that's what I've come up with. And the other one is hanging from the digital, so this ought to add some light to the uh, upcoming videos. Just an FYI, that's how I'm going to light the stuff from now on. Until I get better lights, of course. There you go. Just a little behind the scenes.